Hello and welcome. This is Kevin, also known as AWOL. And today we're going to go further on this whole trek about doubles. Now, obviously, this is way beyond a double. This is something from back in 88. I hadn't even been doing knots for a year yet. And I realized something about doubles. If you can make it double, you can make it as many wide as you want. And though I'm not going to get too much into that in this video, I just want you to realize that this is a gateway to being able to do much bigger projects. Now, this one here, um, I wanted to kind of show like a single version before showing the double, but I really don't have a lot of candy stripes. And this one is a little bit different, and I wanted to kind of explain how in this instance, this double wide is a little bit different. What we have here is the left hand side is a candy stripe going to the right. And as soon as it reaches the center point, it has a knot from the right hand side that's come down and it goes once to the left and then once to the right. And that means that the purple in that first row, it ends up being still on the right hand side. And the yellow on that first row from the left hand side, it stays on the left hand side. So this is like two candy stripes that are actually put together rather than a chevron. And for me, that still actually counts as a double wide because obviously. A sh like a chevron, you would have them kind of coming together and both those strings kind of branch off and do their own thing. So that's sort of a completely different thing from a chevron. Okay, so okay, now this next one. This one is a candy stripe that has every so often a, um, a square notched out that's going in the opposite direction. Now this is a lot like the um, bracelet from the last one where there's like a stripe running down the middle. It's just selective about where that stripe actually is. And before this video is up, I'm going to give you a whole like demonstration on, on varieties of this. But why I brought this one up is, is because there is this, a double version of that. So you can see it's the, still the same um, pattern. It's still the same. Everything going on with it, it can be made into a double wide. Now this is similar to our first in the series where it's basically, it's, there's no like major changes. We didn't like reverse the order of the, the second side or anything like that. It just continues on. Now for these, admittedly, um, I did have to use mapping. So there is somewhere, or at least was somewhere, some graph paper where I worked all this stuff out in order to be able to make this happen. So if you can't do this in your head, don't feel bad. That's not unusual. It's, it's totally a thing. Um, but I want you to see what is possible once you learn how to double it because it changes the pattern altogether. All right, now this one, this goes back to my really, really early days of making bracelets when I only knew the two knots, the ones going to the right and the ones going to the left. And if you look at it, to me, this was always the fish. If you like pick any one of the colors, except for the very um, bottom one, there's like a fish. It's They're going off to the right hand side. Um, I don't know. They used to have bumper stickers on cars that look like that. I, that's what I always associated this with. So um, anyways, this design had, once you, okay, at this level, there, you're limited to about, uh, three or four different ways of doing it. But once you double it, then the real possibilities come in here. You can see it still does the fish, but the fish is doubled up, right? You can see it kind of going like, particularly I see it like with the top one, the red, right? Um, it looks a lot less like a fish at this point, but it's for me i can still see it there but when you double it right you can start so this one it doesn't have the tails do you see that like where the one before you could still have the tails of the fish this one doesn't 
it's just a slight variation on that same thing. And then let's see, we have, okay, there's two on this page. It's got some other stuff. This is from way back. Um, again, you can see yet another variation. And these, these possibilities weren't available in the single. And that's kind of what I'm trying to show you here is that um, as we advance, you know, get, get used to that first one. Get used to how to do it in the single. Get relatively good at it. And then as you advance, here's the room for going in a whole new direction. Here's a different version where the one color, the gray, stays consistent through it. Um, and just the reds do the changing. So it's, again, it's just a different version of the same thing. All right, the next one we have, this is fun, um, is, is kind of like the, the whole zigzag thing. You can see the one on the left is uh, like where the zigzag is like a 5-3. And then the ones on the right is like, what is that, 5-2? So it just, it changes when you change the numbers that go in the zigzag, how that works. So how I, how I count it is, um, if you're on the left-hand side of the bracelet, it was five coming down to the, towards the right, and then three going off to the left, and then five to the right, and it just keeps going back and forth like that. Um, but now the, the double of that, of the ones that were on the right-hand side is this. Now this... Um, I think what makes this so eye-catching is because it's doubled up, because it's on a, uh, a gradient, and I don't know, there's just something about the, the size and all the, the movement and stuff that's going on, that I think that really makes that kind of special. And it's sort of, I'm not sure this one necessarily completely is in the same line because I mean it did kind of change in the middle but there is a relative um, similarity of how this one was made and again just changing a little bit of its variety will change how people are going to see your, your design or, or see that particular bracelet so um, hopefully you're, you're looking at this and you're thinking wow that's you know, something I can do. Um, so this one here is similar to that last one in the fact that it's, you know, the way the zigzag comes and, and flips in the center, the difference being that the top and the bottom of it were kind of closed in. And from there, you can see a double wide of that. Um, and again, it's just an applied variation. So, if you, again, start with the simple one, get used to the simple one, and then go ahead and try something like this. Mind you, at this level, I would say this is probably more advanced than perhaps any beginner might be interested in. But that said, I think if you know what you're going to strive towards, it might make it easier to kind of envision what you kind of want to work on as far as skills go. Now, this one, this is kind of neat because um, I was playing with the whole rainbow of colors for a whole group for like a, a family thing here. Um, and you can see this is like a, a, the same zigzag variety, just yeah, this is only, what, six colors per bracelet. So it's like... Um, 12 strings so that's kind of fun but when you go and you try to double that and if you can mix the colors you can end up with something like this now this um, I used to have one of these that was about um, three or four times the size of this so yeah once you go big you can go as big as you like um, this is rather complicated and if you're interested, um, maybe at some point we can kind of go over this one because this kind of has all kinds of extra crazy rules and things that went into making it that's uh, 
<laughs> it's just way too hard to explain. All right, let's do the next. The next is, okay, so this was, I wanted to make something look like links of a chain. And um, I was playing around with graph paper and, and trying to work it out. And the one on the left, you can see at the top, the it was like the link kind of goes off into where the first loop was. And I realized that that didn't have to be. So the next one I made is the one on the right. So it has a, a better start and a better end to it. And that's that just shows part of the progression of how these things get made. Now, mind you, the double wide of that is are these. And in all reality, they came first. This is a much older um, image than the other one. And the widest one was the first one I did. It was the first one I kind of sorted out on the graph paper and how I could make the links. And then once I had done the really wide one, I was like, oh, I can make that a little bit smaller, I guess. So then came the green and brown one. And then I was like, well, wait, could I do the chains instead of going horizontal horizontally? Couldn't I do it vertically? And lo and behold, that's what led to the other ones. But it shows both uh, progression as well as variation. So, and the difference between doing something in a single versus a double, I think kind of gives you an idea of, you know, things that you might want to work on. Now, earlier I spoke of how the striped versions can change. So here we have, this is just a simple three stripe down the middle. Um, three are going off to the left, everything else is going to the right. Now, in this, okay, I don't have a whole lot of doubles for this, but I want to show variation in a pattern. If you come up with something like this and you find that, oh, hey, this is easy, then I want you to consider the possibility of maybe changing it. So here's one that we were looking at before. Can you see that how that's just a slight variation? All we've done was let the ones that are going to the right be able to kind of cut into that center design. It's still three going to the left. It's just not as consistent, right? Now, once you can do that, then you can do maybe something like this one. This one, I just eliminated half the squares, right? So it's kind of, I mean, it's the same thing. In my head, it was, it was exactly the same thing. It was just how I changed how that worked, right? Now this one, I changed it again. I changed how often the little squares were going to get broken off. And it kind of has like a, uh, I don't know, like a little V-shape at the top and the bottom. I thought that would kind of add some kind of point of interest. And, you know, um, again, just a variation on the same thing. Okay, now this one. <laughs> again, it's still the stripes, but now they're broken and they're in three different sets. And again, I think that if you grasp the idea of what a pattern is and then start to think about how you can maybe alter the pattern, um, then you can take it much further. Now, I think these ones in particular might actually work out really cool as a bag or double wide or whatever. Um, okay, here we have this one. This is just a rainbow. I think it's, I can't remember if this is six or 12 shades. I think it might be 12. Um, but again, I changed the center stripe again. And this time it sort of goes into kind of an oval, I guess. Um, but again, this is all about showing you how to take a design, maybe something that you're comfortable with, and being able to experiment with the next level. Mind you, you really have to be comfortable with the basic pattern itself first, and then maybe use some graph paper to sort out how you want to make your alteration, and then from there, it shouldn't be too difficult. Now, for the next video we're gonna, I'm going to work on, I'm going to try to teach how to do this. This is basically doing a double wide 
of two completely different patterns. So if there's any particular patterns you'd like to see in this, um, I would suggest getting your suggestions in as quickly as possible because I'm probably going to have to start working on this video shortly. So um, hopefully I can get you guys into doing things that you didn't even think was possible. So um, if you liked what you learned in this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have questions, by all means, leave it in the, in the uh, comments and I will try to get back to them as quickly as possible. And until next time, don't get your strings in a bunch.